I assure you that I am the book of fate. Questions are my enemies, for my questions explode. Answers leap up like a frightened flock, blackening the sky of my inescapable memories. Not one answer, not one suffices. What prisms flash when I enter the terrible field of my past? I am a chip of shattered flint enclosed in a box. The box gyrates and quakes. I am tossed about in a storm of mysteries. And when the box opens, I return to this presence like a stranger in a primitive land. Slowly, slowly I say, I relearn my name. But that is not to know myself. This person of my name, this Leto, who is the second of that calling, finds other voices in his mind, other names and other places. Oh, I promise you, as I have been promised, that I answer to but a single name. If you say Leto, I respond. Sufferance makes this true. Sufferance and one thing more. I hold the threads. All of them are mine. Let me but imagine a topic, say, men who have died by the sword. And I have them in all their gore, every image intact, every moan, every grimace. Joys of motherhood, I think. And the birthing beds are mine. Serial baby smiles and the sweet cooings of new generations. The first walkings of toddlers and the first victories of youths brought forth for me to share. They tumble one upon another until I can see little else but sameness and repetition. Keep it all intact, I warn myself. Who can deny the value of such experiences? The worth of learning through which I view each new instant. Ah, but it's the past. Don't you understand? It's only the past. This morning, I was born in a yurt at the edge of a horse plane in a land of a planet which no longer exists. Tomorrow, I will be born someone else in another place. I have not yet chosen. This morning, though, ah, this life. When my eyes had learned to focus, I looked out on sunshine on trampled grass and I saw vigorous people going about the sweet activities of their lives. Where, oh where, has all that vigor gone?